charged but it was an enormous amount but he gave you the skin so he came back and said i killed this animal on your range in such and such a place and you the, 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 the skin of the lion wrapped up and you gave it then you paid him you didn't pay him before now this tell me again this was uh this was a hunter he was a professional hunter was he American or Mexican? American. American. And he had his own maps. He made his own maps. And uh, he had a real cute story because his wife was always with him. And I think her name was Jane or something like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to frighten you with what I'm going to tell you. And he used to say, Jane and I have been screwing up these canyons for 20 years. Of course, he used the F word. I know every place here. And he would get out her maps. She made the maps and where all these little bumps were and all the little rocks, but he would brag about it like that. And all of my, uh, my mother's cousins would say, you know, the same phrase. We've been screwing up and down these canyons since 1920 or something. That's what he used to say. That's the way he would brag about how well he knew that country and why she made the maps. And they were beautiful. They were works of art, but I don't remember his name nor her name. But she, so her name wasn't Jane? No, he would make it up, you know. No, I'm just making it up because he would say, instead of, instead of saying my wife and I, he would say so and so and I have been. Now, it wasn't one of the Finn brothers. Finn Moroni, Joe Finn. Could be Joe Finn. Joe Finn? Uh-huh. That name, I know. Because he lived, uh, he lived at, um, well, there was a family named McNeil. Yo, oh, yes. He used to live at Las Vanas uh -huh. a long time ago. And, um, and Joe Fenn lived at uh, El Oso, Rancho El Oso. Si, sí, the Cañón del Oso. Uh -huh. Cañón. And, and so you think this might have been Joe Fenn? Who, uh, was no, I don't know. Hunter. I don't know. But he was an American. Yes, and you think he would say something like that in front of people? Not the Mormons. No, I think. Well, they weren't, they weren't very good Mormons. No. Oh. Well, if he had just the one wife and he carried on this way with the one wife, I think he was doing pretty well. And I think she was doing pretty well following him around with pack horses and, and sleeping in canyons. She was, um, Joe Fenn, um, well, I don't know his wife. I knew I, his daughter. He had a daughter who lives down in um, Colonia Dublin. His daughter's name is Beulah McNeil. Yeah. She married. Do you know Beulah McNeil? Yes, I, do. I don't know her, but I know the name. I do very well. You know her? Oh, yes. Yeah. Everybody knows Beulah. Yeah. Well, she was, she was uh, Wayne McNeil's daughter. Yes. And she, who, and she used to live at Las Barras when she was uh, young. But anyway, I'm not supposed to do the talking. You're supposed to do the talking. Well, I, I, think, I think I've already scraped my memory and my brain. No, no. I, there's still, there's still something more. Did you ever meet him? Did you ever hear of a man named Bill Bye. He also was a hunter. Bill Bye. Never. But this man that I told you, I never met him. But I, the stories that they would tell about him, and I knew that he would bring in the skin of the, of the, of the lion. That's the way he would collect his money. And they would pay him a lot. I don't know what a lot would mean, but maybe $100. And $100 then was a fortune. He would, sometimes he would take six weeks, he would follow the animal around. He would track it. Um, where did he, do you know where he lived, where his house was, where his home was? I think he went out uh, through Antelope Wells into Hachita to buy his groceries. And he might have gone down into Douglas, Arizona, come, gone over El Pulpito, come down into Douglas, Arizona to buy groceries. Now, when you were, uh, when you were out at the ranch there, where did people go when they wanted supplies and groceries? Some what? Groceries? Groceries, supplies, equipment. Well, they... lots of people went to Barispe. Mm -hmm. oh. Lots of people, because nobody bought groceries then. It was rice, oatmeal, coffee, sugar, flour. And you provided your own lard somehow or other. Salt, naturally, and sugar. But no one bought groceries. People and beans. That's what people eat, not anything else. If, uh, well, maybe 
you were going to go to, if you needed clothes or tools or equipment, uh, where would you go? Douglas, Arizona. Because Wilcox, Arizona had some good places for tools and for for uh, tractor parts and automobile parts. But Douglas, Arizona and Wilcox was the easiest for us. Because if we went out through Antelope Wells, we wouldn't get anything till we got to Deming. And Deming wasn't that great. You had to come to El Paso. And when, if you, how did you, uh, how did you go from your ranch to? From my ranch to was about 48 miles to the border. And we crossed the border at Antelope Wells. And there was a straight very good scraped road to Hachita. And at Hachita, we had sort of like a paved road to the highway that went to Demi. How about if you were going to go to Douglas, how would you go? Then? Well, we, oh, that was a beautiful trip. You'd cross the same way and you stuck to the fence. You followed the line, it's called Geronimo Trail. And the first, the, 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 there was, um, you go, you go to a place called Animus, not the, not the town, but the Animus cattle country, you went, a cattle company, you went through there, then uh, McDonald's Ranch, and then after McDonald's Ranch, you're on him or trail into Douglas. Beautiful. It was, it was the land that uh, later on the government uh, leased to the ranchers when they, they hadn't had good rain. It was all oak trees and pine. It, it's really worthwhile to go to there. It's oh, so beautiful. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Geronimo Trail. Yeah. And you, you'd come right into Douglas. Yeah. And you wouldn't, so you wouldn't go over the Caretas Pass? Or the no, no, oh, no, no. Everything was, we went to the States. At that time, it was the most, most wonderful thing to be able to cross the border without papers. And nobody distrusted you when there were no, no chuecos or thieves or people. People carried a gun inside of their car, and they, they, they'd get rusty because you never used the guns. I know my dad had one, but I don't think he ever used it or cleaned it. Now, when, when did you marry uh, Jose? Jose right. Martinez, I don't remember. Mm, 52 years ago, 1947, 1948. And he, by that time, uh, he was already living on uh, the uh, San Pedro? No, no. He, he was an office man. He worked here in El Paso. Oh, so when did you move to the... I moved to, uh, let me see, 52 years ago. Then, 52 years ago. I had been married a year. I had my first little boy, and he died. And we buried him in January of that year, 1949. And my father gave me the ranch when my baby died. Oh, he said that? Yes, he said he said, okay, exactly. My father gave me the ranch. He gave me an inheritance while I was alive. And so you and, and Jose? We lived there from 1949 till he's been dead 23 years. You have to figure out the, the dates. I'm not very good at that. Well, 23 years ago is 19... 1970. 70. I guess we lived there 20 years, something from 1949 to 1969. 1949. That would be more. And, so your, and your father uh, had it before that? Father, well, we stayed there a couple of summers. What he did was fix up the house. And then he, he built the big house in Santanita because my mother never liked San Pedro. So he built this house for my mom in Santanita. And the... Um, the San Pedro Ranch was a, was a working cattle ranch. Oh, it's a marvelous cattle ranch, but it wasn't that big. I don't remember how many acres it was, but we only could run a thousand head. We couldn't run more than a thousand head, and in Santanita you could run five thousand head. I had heard that in 1940 uh, the San Pedro Ranch was. There were some cattle that were being stolen in 1940, and that um, and that it was being blamed on Indians. Have you ever heard any story like mm -hmm. that? No, it's not true. No, it could have could have been the the the, the other part of uh, of San Pedro that was called El Adobe. Oh, now what's that part? Mm -hmm. But I'd never heard. Of, see, let me tell you. 
this is San Pedro right here. Okay, right here is, this is the northern border is Ojitos Ranch. Ojitos Ranch. And here we had the farmers, the, what do you call the uh, ejidatarios? The, oh, the ejidos. Ejidos. Yeah. We had one ejido here, mm -hmm. and these people were the ones that stole cattle from us. But it wasn't that many. It could be 10 head a year. When they wanted to eat meat, they'd go over and, and steal a head or two. But we, so we hired, we had, a, we had a policeman. One of our cowboys was a policeman. He could, had the permit to carry a gun, and he would ride the fence. We always had a policeman, what we called, um, what do you call it? Comadre. Cordera? Like cordera. Cordada. Cordada. La A. La Cordada. Yeah, yeah. Starts with a name. Yeah. Remember the. An armed man. The other cowboys didn't have, didn't, didn't have the permit for a gun. But we always had a, a state cop or a state policeman running, riding our. But there was no such thing. That Whoever told you that was, wasn't true. The ejidos were the ones that stole the cattle. And they stole it to eat. They didn't steal it to sell or to raise cattle. Now they steal it by trade. Well, they do, but when, I, and when we lived there, it wasn't there. But now they you can't. won't believe what trouble I had with them. They had no water. So coming down from here to my place, there was a real good stream that had clear water. The women would walk down with their dirty clothes and do their laundries on Mondays or Tuesdays. And they would do the laundry there, mess up my cattle water with soap, and rinse it right where the cattle were drinking, and then put the clothes out to dry on the rocks and the bushes. And to them, it was like a holiday. You could hear them screaming and having, uh, all the little kids would come down and they'd bring their lunch. And laundry day to them was a, a, a fiesta. But so later on, we had to move over and, and stop them because they would ruin the water for three days. Right in, the, in, the, in, our, in our bebederos, they would rinse their sheets and everything there. Oh, that's terrible. That's incredible, that's but terrible. it's true. That's terrible. Now, the, um, where was El Adobe, that, that one? That El Adobe was half of San Pedro. And we had several, we, it finally belonged to a man by the name of Velasquez, Henry Velasquez. And before that it belonged to someone, my dad sold it to William Boyd of Boyd Construction here in El Paso. Oh, the same family as Gordon Boyd? No, 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 no. You know that Gordon Boyd had a terrible ending, don't you? Uh, he murdered somebody in his, uh, who did he murder? Gordy? He killed someone. They were, drank, they were drinking, and they got into an argument, and he killed somebody. Really? And my father had to take the, the dead man out. I didn't know that. I did not know. Where, uh, where did that happen? Carretas, right at the ranch. He killed him right at the ranch. They had to find an argument. Um, and I used to like him a lot, because he used to send me a, a real good saddle horse every year. When I started riding, when I was about eight or nine, he used to send, se llamaba El Barrilito. And he used to, uh, are your girls there, Lalo? Yeah, this is Aida there. Does she want her horses here? And he'd send it shoed, shiny, just beautiful. He'd send me my horse every year, and I would ride it June, July, and August, and then send it back in August. You like, did you like riding horseback? Well, I wasn't the best one of the three. I have a, do a, a sister who's a show woman, but I was never very good. I was just very, did, uh, I didn't sit pretty. I didn't handle the reins pretty. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I was just sloppy. What What happened to Gordy Boyd after? I don't remember. Gordy. Because I think my my dad took the. Um, so they came and told him that he had killed. But who did he kill, comadre? It must have been accidental. They were drinking. Maybe. How did Jack Crystal die? I don't think so. My brother was too young then. It was a scandal, you know. 
They went and told my dad that this man, the body was there and that uh, Gordy had disappeared and that they had seen him kill him. And dad went into the pickup and he took a tarp and he picked up the dead man. And um, I don't know what he took him to Hanos first. He was an American, evidently. After from Hanos, he asked permission to take him to his family. It wasn't John Carr. He was a well-known man. I can't remember that. I think it I was John Carr. I remember that. When then he, died, put, he took him, wrapped him up, and took him to Hachita. I think it was John Carr and took him to his family. When, when uh, Gordy died, did the Hualalito take it, bring him to the States? It he could be. Your... I don't remember. But I just know that Gordy had a, a, a he was a good neighbor and a, and a, he was a violent man because he drank and got violent. But he killed this man. What happened to Gordy after that? I don't know. Did he Can't remember. Didn't go to jail? No. How long did he live after that? I don't know. Who did he sell carretas to? His son inherited. He had a heart attack. But then, and, uh, that was died. one of the best ranches in the state of Chihuahua. Yes, it was. And he died from the heart attack. You don't have any more information on, on Boyd? On Gordon Boyd? Um, not a lot. I just. But I'm, you didn't know he had murdered this man? No, I never heard okay, that. Okay, well, I now you can add something to that. What, uh, when, you know when he, when did Well, he we know? still lived in Las Varas. He, my brother was six years old, uh, 1936. Well, see, I, I hadn't gone there. 1936, 1935. That, he, that's when Some the point, killing Because happened. we hadn't graduated. After we graduated, did you still keep going to the to ranch on the summer? Yes. 1936, it could have been, Mr. Goodwin. I'm going to be worn out with all of this brain work. <laughs> Your computer. Oh, but oh, my computer. God, this is horrible. What um, did now? Are there any Boyd's? Are there any members of the Boyd family still here? In Not El that Paso? I know. I she would know more. I don't know anything I was about El Paso. Him that Quinn went to school with Oscar, my brother, mm. and I knew his wife. And after his father died, he tried to hold on to the ranch, but Gordy had become a Mexican. Quinn did not. He was an American. And they were giving him problems. And he but they had to sell it? Could he inherit being an American? You, they give you five years to do dispose of it, and he sold it. He, t he didn't want to hang on to it. He, Licenciado Flores was governor. And he went to talk to Bill to see if they could come to some agreement. He said, it's no use, Bill. I can't get to an agreement with the the governor. He sold it. The, um, there's one thing I wanted to uh, ask you about. Oh, about um, uh, Sabina. Sabina? Well, she knows her more than I do. She worked for you for a while? Yeah, but she worked more for, she worked more for Virginia. Pero verdad que she had no last name? Oh, no. She was Indian. No, she but, I, I, but I think we, we called her Martinez in self-defense. Yeah, well, what, she had a passport. Did well, but I got the passport for her. But what was the last name you put on? We put, we put Martinez because we were Martinez. She didn't have one, I tell you. She didn't have a last name. She was so cute. She had the, the, the most incredible sense of humor, and she, she had a dirty mind. She, she loved dirty jokes. I mean, she, she was nothing, of, but she, and she would use words that had double meanings, you know? And when she, when she would use them with me, uh, I would tell her, remember, if anybody comes in, you're not saying this to me. I'm, I'm your patrona, and you're supposed to be respectful. But she was so cute. She was a lovely woman. And she would, uh, my, my daughter, number two, didn't like eggs. And she came to me when Carmela, and her daughter was already grown. So, by, well, it was the same age as Aida. She was two years old. Oh, and she would girls. say, all right, I'm going to fix eggs for breakfast. She would tell the kids, because she was a nana. She just took care of the little girls. I had four girls. So she would say, OK, Aida, do you want an egg this morning? And she would say, not unless you lay it yourself. 
So she would sit on this bench with her little apron on like this, and she would huff and she would puff, and my little daughter would sit there, you know, just delight. And then she would start cackling. And then she would put her hand behind her back, and here it is, and she would get out the egg. And then I said, okay, I'll eat your eggs, but I don't want chicken eggs, I just want your eggs. But she was incredible. And she had wonderful manners. <laughs> oh, yes. She corrected she knew her how children to how to eat, how to do everything. Do you have any pictures of her? Do I don't have any pictures? any pictures at all. I want to go into the basement right see, now. Um, see, uh, uh, Santanita burned down, but I don't remember what year. Um, and everything burned down in it. When Lalita was a year old, Lalita oh, was sobrina. Oh, yes, he would, that would be 40 years ago. It burned down. It burned yeah, down the house ago. completely. There was, um, so you don't have any old photographs? Nothing. The, the old ranch or nothing, anything like nothing. that? Nothing, nothing. I don't even have any of San Pedro. Oh. Because San Pedro got burned after Pepe Martinez died. But now, but it was a stone building. No, but that didn't do any good, just the stone walls were left. Is that but all the roof burned. Uh -huh. I never saw it, I wasn't there, and I never went back. Yeah. It belonged to my son-in-law then. What, um, well, I, last, when I was, when I was in, uh, in Ascension, um, oh, about a month ago, I met a cowboy that used to work on your ranch, Leonardo Chavez. Oh, he's a, he's a doll. Yeah. He was my right-hand man. Yeah. You did, did he tell you where I was? Um, or didn't you ask him? No, I asked him. I asked him. Um, and uh, I, I already heard about you from Bilo Wallace. He's a doll. And, but then uh, Leonardo uh, told us about you, too. And, and, um, Nayo, N-A-Y-O. Nayo. Nayo, Nayo Chavez. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he was a great guy. He was a... Uh, and he told us, now he has seen the ghost. Well, see, he's a... Uh, uh, he worked for the people that... Uh, the keys to all of the... to all of the gates, and I said, look, Nayo, San Pedro, my San Pedro doesn't exist anymore, except in my memories, and I would never never want to see what these people did there. Absolutely not. So he was very disappointed because I didn't want to go. And he still, he still works there? Well, he still works. He's not, his health isn't that great. Mm -hmm. They put up a little uh, restaurant right now. First his nephew put it up, and now they bought it from his nephew. And his wife, all of Dayo's children were born on San Pedro. All of his children. He was with me for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Lupe is his wife's name. Very nice looking woman. Hmm. Uh, tell me again, the, the Panuelas Ranch was... What is it? The Panuelas... Peñuelas. Peñuelas. P-E-N. P-E-N. Peñuelas. Peñuelas. Peñuelas Ranch. Now that, tell me again which ranch that was. That was the, that was part of the... Morris Ranch. Morris. Peñuelas was belonged to Mr. Morris, the Morris family. Right. Okay. When we, when my dad and my grandfather bought it, then they divided it. My grandfather kept half of it, and he called it Agua Blanca, and the other half, my father, stuck it onto Las Varas and called it Santa Anita. What? Um, El Cañón de los Osos in the back. That belonged also to Mr. Morris. Uh, so. Well, now that belongs to one of my one of my sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the Morrises are all gone now. Oh, they're, they're all gone. dead. Yeah. I don't think there's any left living. Mm -hmm. There could be no, but more uh, Curtis Morris. There's a Virginia Morris there somewhere, mm -hmm. and she's a niece to to Curtis Morris and a granddaughter to this Mr. Morris who owned Peñuelas. Right. Yeah. So when you say uh, the Gabilondo family, you know that the Gabilondos bought Peñuelas mm -hmm. and then divided into two. Did, um, 
Did you ever hear a story about a man named Chayo Prieto? Oh yes, Chayo, but he lives from Hanos. From Hanos. But there's no stories about them. That was a very respectable, beautiful family. Uh, Virginia knows, was a very close friend of theirs. I, they, they weren't my friends. She's the one that's very close to them, knows all of them and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wondered because Nayo Chavez told us a story about, uh, about, um, Chayo? about Chayo Prieto, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that he, once he was, there were some Apaches chasing him and he ran a horse to death to get away from them. Did you ever hear that story? No. no. I don't know. Anyway. Any, th any story that, that Nayo told you is true, but he probably decorated it a lot. The bells yes. doesn't. Yes. Que si no so es un cuento de Chayo Prieto, le digo that you people knew the Prietos, I didn't. And what was the cuento? What was the story behind it? That, um, that he, he was chased by some Apaches. Uh, but he's dead. Well, yes. I mean, Chayo is dead. Yeah, but a long time ago. He was chased by some Apaches. But he was horse. a little kid, maybe? Yes. Yeah, he was young. He was on horseback, and uh, he ran a horse and just got to Hanos, and the horse died. Well, it could be. That could be true, because there are pioneers there. The Prieto family had been No, there. but I never, like I tell him, I never heard of Apaches in that part of the country, never. In Hanosi, in the, tu uh, lugar, it's, yeah, you're right, there were Yaquis, Bavispe and all of you, but we did have Apaches. Well, in, in, in Bavispe, in, in the Bavispe, I've, I've never heard of Apaches no, in Bavispe. No, Yaquis. Yaquis, but not Apaches. See. Mm -hmm. You had an old, uh, you had a, a very old man on your ranch. Who but was I don't know what he is. What? Uh, don't you have a book of Sarelas? Yeah, just a minute. I Maybe uh, Mr. Goldman I, might be interested in reading it. It was, this was a man who was a blacksmith? Yeah, he, he started with my grandfather uh -huh. when he was a young man. And he lived, he died at the age of 110. Yeah, in 28, was in, uh, Obregón, our president of Mexico? I don't know. I don't think so. No tienes el de Sarela? Well, Sarela has it there, and if he might be interested in reading, it begins with Maestro. Let me put on my reading glasses now. Can you see without your glasses? No, absolutely not. So this is your... That's book. my daughter's book. That's your daughter's book? That's an autobiography. You might be interested in, well, in reading story it. story alone. See, I got a, a book for the Griffins. They loved it. Just for the story. But none of them, none of those, that data is anything more concise than mine. That's a little girl's uh, memories, really? memories of, yes. of, of, of this blacksmith. Oh, the blacksmith. Yes, he's, yes, he's in there. He's called Let me El, El Maestro. I went down to see si, if I could si. find a picture okay. of Sarina. After my dad, uh, after my grandfather died, my, my dad inherited. Uh, Maestro Gabriel was his name, but we don't have, he doesn't have a last name. And after he, after my dad did, uh, died, I inherited him. I kept him till he died. And um, what He died you... at the age of 110. But I wasn't there when he died. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where they buried him. What was he like? What did he look like? Uh... Well, he looked like an Indian, but he was tall for an Indian, very dark. But he wasn't Negroid at all. He had very nice features, big eyes, a nice aquiline nose, very nice looking man. And he had gray hair, and he got uh, completely bow-legged, like this. He would be walking and stopping his, the dogs would, he always had two or three dogs with him. The dogs would go through his legs, he was so bow-legged. But she, this is better than, this, if you read this, you're going to. His because name is, your grandfather was a close friend of President Obregón and Calles. Calles was before after the Do you know, do you have any idea what, what kind of an Indian uh, he was? No. Nice throw? I think it was a Yaqui. I don't think, I don't know if he's he, I don't think Apache. it was an Apache. Mm -mm. They were Yaquis mostly. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it would be like. I'm looking for blacksmith. All right, blacksmith. And uh, what was his job on the ranch? What did he do? There? He chopped wood day and night. 
It wasn't a farrier. Well, well, I didn't have any wagons then. It no, was my grandfather and my father, he was a blacksmith, but I didn't even have a but blacksmith shop. It was a farrier. I just, I just inherited uh -huh. him because he was dying and there was no one to feed him. I didn't even pay him a wage. I just took care of him. Doctors and everything, and, and uh, he did what he wanted. He'd say, what do you want? Chop wood. So I'd say chop wood, and he'd chop wood from 6 in the morning till it got dark at night. And then he'd take care of the dogs. That's Black all he did. Smith is not here. Bursford is. Lord de Lavelle James Bursford. Okay, bueno. You got the whole name there? Mm -hmm. Then you yeah. got those names? Okay. Now let me look at the... No contrasta maestro. You have to, let me get it for you. I thought you had looked for blacksmith. No, I do. I did. He's not there under blacksmith. This one looks like it's been through the rain like mine has. Yeah, it's been through the um, oh my God. I've used it a lot. I, I can't use that Ella. She's too much of a gourmet cook for No, me. besides she does she she cooks like a restaurant too. Well, it doesn't do you any good. You have no no uh, no practice and no no, need. no you don't have the right um uh, Ingredients? No, and I don't the, have the amounts of the ingredients are correct. I don't have the touch. Maestro M E. No, he's not here either. No. Well, let me look at and see. Look at Gabriel. Well, I'm going to have to be going pretty soon. Okay. I have to go feed my husband. He's going to say, "Where did she use?" The beauty shop took a long time. Well, I did, I did my feet, Look, my hands, your my hair, your everything. It takes two hours, exactly two hours. It does. Gabriel Maestro, okay. 7882. What you ought to do is get, get the book and read into the... I will. See, I, will I think, that. read it out loud. Well, I'll lend it to you. Well, I'm going to get my own copy of it. I don't think it. you can find it right now. Yes. Uh, yes, you, Rafael? Yes. My great grandfather, Rafael Gabilondo, took in a seven year old Yaqui Indian orphan okay. to work on his ranch of Oaxaca in Sonora mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. When Rafael died, Gabriel went to work with my grandfather, Papa Lalito, who had several ranches in Chihuahua and Sonora. In the late 40s, my mother, who had known Gabriel from the time she was born, brought him to our ranch of San Pedro de Ojitos as a maestro herradero. Herrero. Yes, yeah, it says herradero, herradero. I told well. her that was her big That's uh, mistake. Wrong. Well, maybe it was a print though. Master Blacksmith, when she and my father moved there with me, then a new baby. Like all artisans in Mexico, he was invar invariably called maestro. Maestro Gabriel <laughs> made all the horseshoes for the ranch. He fixed the axles for the carro de mul mulas transported firewood, he would make hinges for gates and doors, the ranch smithy, his domain was at the back of the house, over the embers hung a barbecue-like contraption with a velvet on one. I love to go there, mm -hmm. remember how we loved uh, that I think that like would, what, he, what, he to, what Mr. Goodman would do is read from it and read I, into it. You would it. get a lot of uh, But you can't get this book anymore because it's out of print, it's like mine. But you can order it. I'll try to mm -hmm. order it. She, I, do you ever go to New York? Mm -hmm. Well, she has them in her restaurant right. for sale. And her restaurant is that. Oh, I know. I have to. I've got. To, my wife is in New York. Oh, she is. Over the weekend. Oh, you tell me. And to go I will tell. And she. I mean, she yeah, to, was. To go. No, but my daughter won't be this there this weekend. She'll be here this weekend. Oh, she'll be. Because she wrote another book and she's uh, pushing her new promoting book. Promoting the book. Is this the name of the restaurant? Yes, Sarah, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I should have a card in my purse. I have before. I've told, oh, yeah. that's why and it maybe so we corrected some of the. To to oh, it's like. very, it's very good. Absolutely, it was very fulfilling. Now, the one other thing, I just want to make sure, um, whether whether it was a, a Panches or Yaquis or any other kind of Indians, did any Indians ever come to the ranch? To your ranch, either Never. Santa Anita, La Spana, No place, no Pedro. place. The only Indian I ever saw was that little girl. And it's a miracle that I remembered it because it was such a passing thing. Well, I'll tell you, that little girl. She would be. This is 
Anyway, I sure wish your 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 wife could go there. She's. Well, she uh, would. Um, I'll be sure to tell her. About are you going to talk to her tonight? Yeah. It's um, nine uh, fifty three Second Avenue, okay. right. between fiftieth and fifty first. Nine fifty three. Yeah, Second Avenue. Fiftieth and fifty first. Mm -hmm. Savannah. Between fiftieth and fifty this is my daughter. She'll be here tomorrow. She just finished writing a book on Oaxaca. Uh -huh. She's my oldest daughter. I have four girls. And she is uh, Virginia's goddaughter. She was born in in, in Sonora. In Sonora, uh -huh. Where? Agua Prieta. Oh. Uh -huh. And 953 2nd Avenue yeah, between her. 50th and 51st. And her name is Sarela. Sarela, Sarela Martinez. Martinez. She was 50 years old last month. Well, for goodness sakes. My wife, oh. And that food is not Mexican food. It's Mexican gourmet. It's very, very exquisite. Very nice. The restaurant is very small. She doesn't have any advertising, no lights. Just the people that uh, that have eaten there keep going back. Really? She doesn't advertise at all. Really? How did she ever find her way to New York City? And well, um, we she had a restaurant here, and I took I took her to New Orleans because she wanted to learn Cajun cooking, and we went to New Orleans and we stayed there two days, and she met Paul Prudhomme, the very having me. And he was her, her uh, mentor. And he, he called us up one day, called her and me, and told us that there were 100 chefs coming in from Paris, and they were going to be entertained at Tavern on the Green in New York, and that they wanted to taste the food of uh, the United States, and that the only people that could do the Southwest food would be uh, Sarela and, and, and her mother. So he invited us, so we went to New York. And so you cooked for all And we cooked for these. Uh, the, we, they had a buffet that was about a block long, and we had the Southwest food on the, and it was an L, and we had the Southwest food in two spots. And that's the way she caught on, on Tavern on the Green. It was one of those things, you know. That's wonderful. That was 12 years ago. She's become very famous. She does television, and she's...